Another month has passed and we've had some great new mobile games come out. With that in mind, here's the 10 best new iOS and Android games of February 2016. Quick disclaimer, this is a list of games you'll have to pay for. The free games list will come out soon. Number 10, Prism. Okay, so if you liked The Room, which was kind of a series of puzzles in a creepy environment, Prism has similar mechanics. However, the look is entirely different. It's a little bit short, three to five hours depending on how long it takes you to do the puzzles, but it's such a visually pleasing game, it's tough to get too angry about that. If you're the kind of person I am and like The Room, the sci-fi aesthetic of Prism is probably something you're gonna wanna try out because it is a well-executed attempt at this type of a game. Number nine, Forbidden Desert. Forbidden Desert is a board game. It can actually be played in physical space, but this is the app version of it. And frankly, it's a great version of the game itself. The game takes place on a five by five board where each of the players will take on one of four actions as they move across it. There's a set of cards in a quote-unquote storm deck that give you negative effects, and you have various actions to complete like excavating, sharing water, or just clearing. It does a good job of teaching you to play the game, and the UI itself is really well organized. I found it easy to get into, and I enjoyed it. Number eight, Wise Chronicles 2 is the sequel to one of the best action RPGs of the 80s. Now, mechanically, the Wise games are a little bit similar to Zelda, but you'll find that with touch controls, these work way better because their control scheme involves much more movement than actually timing of an attack. On top of that, this is probably one of the better looking pixel art games, and people who appreciate that art style are really going to appreciate this game, especially if they haven't seen it before. If you enjoy action RPGs, truly it's hard to say you wouldn't enjoy this one. Number seven, Ellipsis Touch Explore Survive. Ellipsis kind of reminds me of asteroids in some ways and in others, I just don't know what to compare it to. It's fairly simple in concept, you're a blue orb, you move around the screen, you avoid red stuff because red stuff is bad. It's kind of an action puzzle game because this stuff goes on and you kind of have to dodge it, but I don't know, I'd lean more towards action. All of the levels are single screen and there's 120 of them and they're a lot of fun. The thing I possibly like the most about it though is if you let go of the screen, it pauses the game. I'd probably rank Ellipsis as a great combination game. It's multiple genres in one thing and it works fantastically. Number six, A Short Tale, which is a game where you explore your brother's room after wishing to become small and getting your wish but a little bit more than you asked for. You're essentially tiny. You're like a toy-sized human being. It's called a short tale, but there's actually a fairly decently sized amount of area to head around and quite a few puzzles to solve. And it kind of reminds me of 90s point-and-click puzzle games. Not necessarily an adventure game, but close. There's not a lot of stuff out right now that is like this. Number five, The Walking Dead Michonne. If you've played a Walking Dead or any Telltale game before you know exactly what you're getting with this. Some people were a bit worried that this would just be filler, but I have to say this is perhaps one of the more intriguing versions of a Telltale game I've seen. First off, it's significantly more violent, as one might expect with Michonne, and gives you probably about as close as you're going to get to a quote-unquote combat-filled Telltale game. If I had to sum it up in one word, probably the best word to do it would simply be thrilling, because it is just that, and it never gets boring. Number four, Adventures of Mana. Adventures of Mana is actually the game that came before Secret of Mana and was marketed as a Final Fantasy game here. It's obviously been redone in 3D. Square Enix has done a great job in that respect and a 3D remake of one of the better games out of that era. I'll take it. Number three, Final Fantasy IX. Way back in the year 2000, Final Fantasy IX came out and was regarded as kind of return to form after Final Fantasy VII and VIII. Not that VII and VIII were badly received, but they both had a very stylistically different direction. Final Fantasy IX was taking all of the things that were basically created for those games and doing them in a more traditional Final Fantasy setting. It worked out really well and has perhaps one of the more charming stories in any Final Fantasy, being simultaneously really, really goofy as well as legitimately heartwarming. It has a traditional Final Fantasy battle system, and if you understand that, you pretty much know what you're in for. Now, it's a pretty big buy at $20, and I wouldn't normally say it's worth it, but I really enjoyed Final Fantasy IX. Number two, Love You to Bits. Love You to Bits kind of serves as a spiritual successor to Tiny Thief. It's gorgeous. To call it a charming game would not give it enough credit. This game can make you smile as well as punch you right in the gut. If you like old school adventure games or platform games or puzzle games and really need something that's super enjoyable and adorable, I'm going to say give 
give Love You to Bits at least some of your time. And finally, number one, Fran Bao, which is an adventure game with somewhat of a creepy aesthetic that tells a story of a young girl struggling with a mental disorder. At the start of the game, Fran loses her parents, finds them dismembered when she returns home one day, and essentially runs away with her cat. Ultimately, the goal is to find the cat and get the heck out. It sounds simple, but it's not. There's a lot of different puzzles in this game, and some of them get pretty hard. I really enjoy the art style. It kind of reminds me if World of Goo was a little bit more demented. Not that World of Goo isn't demented, but for a mobile game, this is just an entirely unique horror experience. A couple of bonus games for you. The first being Rayman Classic, which is the original Rayman game. Rayman is tough as shit, but I think this is actually one of the best platformers ever. And the other being another Ubisoft game, Assassin's Creed Identity, which does a great job of making the Assassin's Creed series jump from console to mobile. What did you play this month on mobile? Let us know in the comments. We're really interested to hear. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, obviously. It helps us a whole lot. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video, and we will see you again right here on Game Ranks.